May 14th, 2017, and my little boy, Jeffrey McCausland. He's the light of my life, he's amazing. Um, and he also almost killed me. We came home like around noon, and by four or five o'clock I knew something was wrong. My chest was pounding, my head was pounding. I knew I needed to get help, like right away. The nurses that were in the triage station rolled their eyes at me when I finally saw a doctor. He also was dismissive, and I'm just like, this is exactly <laughs> like in that article. Just days before giving birth, Marie McCausland had read an article about the dangers of pregnancy and childbirth in the United States. Every day in America, on average, two or three women die from pregnancy-related causes. Complications include hemorrhage, blood clots, infection, heart failure. It was part of a joint series by NPR and ProPublica called Lost Mothers, which examines why the U.S. has the highest rate of maternal mortality in the developed world. American women are three times likelier to die than women just across the border in Canada. Winner of the 2018 Goldsmith Prize for Investigative Reporting, awarded by the Harvard Kennedy School Shorenstein Center, the series sheds light on an issue that, beyond a few statistics, healthcare researchers know little about. What they were lacking was something that they call qualitative data. Um, and we, as journalists, call stories. And so I realized, oh, there are stories to tell here. This is the story of Lauren Bloomstein, the neonatal nurse at a large medical center near the Jersey Shore. Lauren's husband, Larry, a doctor himself, shared his wife's story with ProPublica's Nina Martin and NPR's Renee Montaigne. We went out to his house expecting to talk to him for about an hour or so, and we spent the whole evening there. And then at that point, he said, you know, I have a little video of, of Lauren and the baby on my cell phone. And there she is, the happiest moment of her life. Her eyes were filled with tears, but they were absolutely tears of joy. It was within an hour and a half. She had a horrible pain in her back, and that, as it turns out, is an indication of HELP syndrome, which is an extreme version of preeclampsia. Preeclampsia affects about 5% of all pregnant women in America. It's highly treatable, but it can turn deadly if that treatment comes too late. In Lauren's case, the doctor did not recognize her symptoms in time. Larry just went back. He just went back. He was there. He told this whole story as if it had happened the night before. She's not basically on life support, but she's brain dead. So at that point, we uh, decided to withdraw. Withdraw care, and then I brought Haley in one last time. And I just put Haley in Lauren's arms. And then they withdrew care, and she, uh, she, she passed away. One of the many things that made it really hard is that he knew what was happening. He recognized that she had um, severe preeclampsia before her doctors and her nurses did. 80% of women who die of preeclampsia die after birth, postpartum. It's a system that just doesn't focus enough on women, and especially women after they've had the baby. For Marie McCausland, Lauren's story helped her recognize that her own high blood pressure was a sign of postpartum preeclampsia. If I hadn't read the article, I know that I wouldn't have taken it as seriously. I had my husband take pictures of me with my son because I was worried that might be all he had to remember me. And I was scared, I was so scared, you know, that that I was gonna not be there for him because the doctors wouldn't listen. But Marie insisted and eventually was given medication before it was too late. It took me about a week to, to talk about this on, on Reddit when I posted my story. The experience led Marie to push for change and the hospital has since agreed to retrain ER staff and to give new mothers more information about postpartum risks. It's still very hard to tell my story, you know, but I feel ready to try to make a change to not let this happen to another woman. Women are so happy to be able to finally reveal that this terrible thing happened to them, not so they would get pity or anything, but just to be like, this happens. 
just to, just to contribute to the knowledge base and the understanding that this happens. But early on, the reporters had to figure out how to find women with first-hand knowledge. We decided that we would launch a call out for stories. I can send them that can link. Them. See if we can verify those so that we can, enough so that we can add them to our list. Say to verify their identity. ProPublica's Adriana Gallardo designed a questionnaire to collect detailed information and use social media to reach out to as many people as possible. We got slammed with 2,000 in the first weekend, and ever since then, every week we get a few dozen. As of this, this week, which is a little over a year later, we have almost 5,000 entries. We were asking women who felt voiceless, who were only ever talking about this in private, we were asking them to be public. Their work also highlighted the tremendous racial disparity in maternal mortality. Black women are three times more likely to die than white women. I spent 10 months working on my piece about Shalon Irving. On a recent afternoon, we joined Shalon's mother, Wanda Irving, in her home outside of Atlanta. She was surrounded by photos and mementos and caring for the baby Shalon left behind when she died from complications of childbirth. In all, ProPublica and NPR have published more than two dozen articles and radio stories in the Lost Mothers series. And they spent months gathering the stories of mothers who have died. We tried to map as many deaths as we could from 2016. And the goal was to give a name, a face, and a, and a story about who she was. So after all of our efforts, we were able to identify 134 women who died in 2016 out of the estimated 800 or so. The researchers were like, oh, wait a second. You found all those women? Because we never, we never find those women. Revealing the names and faces and stories behind the statistics has boosted a movement for better maternal health protocols in hospitals across the country. A lot of conversations happened at the place where they need to happen, which is in hospital systems, which is in doctor's offices, which is among researchers. What we've shown is this can happen to any woman in America having a baby, any woman. I think it struck a lot of people as well, then we better change things.